and welcome to Freshly Brewed Comics. My name is Jake. And I'm Victoria. And today we're going to be going over some 2020 solicitations. Yay! And also we'd like to shout out Uncle Frank and Aunt Donna for these cute retro style Freshly Yay! Brewed Comics mugs! So Victoria, what did you read this week? This week I read Mad Man by Mike Allred. Uh, this is his breakout work, and I love everything that he does ever. So what's it about? Madman is about Frank Einstein, who is a reanimated corpse brought back to life by a famous scientist. And uh, it's just his adventures uh, dealing with criminals and stuff like that. But he's not your conventional superhero. He uses um, yo-yos. Okay. And he has one of, you know, those little disc shooters? Yeah. He has a modified one of those where the edges on the discs are sharpened. So he like, okay. and he takes people out. So he has like all these little gadgets, almost like Inspector Gadget style of um, warfare. But I love him so much. He's so cute and wholesome and he doesn't curse. And he's like a little child because he has that sort of like childlike innocence because he was yeah. brought back to life. Um, and it's just such a fun read. I love it so much. So the uh, flip Um, oh yes! And the best part about it is that the whole first, um, arc has a flip book at the bottom. Let me see if this will, if this will focus in. Oh, uh, let me see. Hold on. It's very important. All right. Ready? Watch this. Yes! <laughs> yes! It's the best! Um... So it's so funny and it's cleverly drawn and written and you just don't want to stop reading about Madman and his little adventures. So I recommend this to anybody that loves Mike Allred. And um, I think we have future plans. Yes. Top secret plans, don't tell anybody. Um, we're oh. gonna do a Mike Allred special in the coming weeks. Yes, and I will read Madman so I'm prepared for it. Mm -hmm. The only thing I know about these books is that uh, Mike Allred got all these famous artists to do pinups of Mad Men. Yes. And so, like, I was at our house this, the other day. This opens with a Jack Kirby Mad Men pinup. That's insane. And it's so cool. Like, and as I, you flip through, there's so many iconic artists who do pinups of Mad Men. And it's just... It's awesome. There's this little disc shooter. Oh, that's Frank Frazetta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! We we'll like, show off all these. I was like... I was flipping through the books at her house the other day, and I was like, oh my god, he got he got Joe Kubert and Daniel Klaus to get, like, they and Frank Miller to do one mm -hmm. in one book, and that's crazy. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a Bruce Timm one. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people. It's awesome. It is awesome. I recommend this so highly. Anything Mike Allred does, just yes. read it. Read it. Read me. This week, I read, um, this is probably my favorite 2019 release. Ooh. Um, 2019 was a pretty good year for comics. You know, we had Frog Catchers by Jeff Lemire. Huge Jeff Lemire guy. Uh, we cover by Bendis and David Mack. That was a good one. Um, and a whole other boatload of stuff. But my favorite... Mr. Miracle. Been, oh, well, that's like a two-year-long running book. Still counts. My favorite was, oh, you can't even see it on the camera, but... Oh, there we go. <laughs> if you hold it that way. <laughs> Leaving Richard's Valley by Michael DeForge. Um, Michael DeForge, we know from Ant Colony. Yes, we do. Ant Colony was his debut, and then this was his uh, most sophomore, recent. Sophomore. No, 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 no. His most no? recent. He has oh. a lot of books. I. These are the only two I've read, though. Oh, cool. Um, but Leaving Richard's Valley, it's it was published as a webcomic, so you could actually read the whole thing on his Instagram. If you go oh. to um, uh, Richard's Valley on Instagram, he posted every single page. It was like a daily webcomic that he did. But oh. it's collected here by Drawn and Quarterly in one big hardcover volume. Um, it's about these animals that live in this valley, Richard's Valley. Richard is kind of like this cult leader, mm -hmm. and he kind of tells them all what to do. It's a very toxic environment. And they get kicked out one day. They get kicked out of the cult onto the streets of, I think it's Toronto, and they have no idea what to do. Um, it's really sad sometimes, but it's overall like a pretty humorous and wholesome read as to expect from Michael DeForge. Mm -hmm. Um, he was an Adventure Time character designer, which I found oh. out, uh, reading his bio in this book, which is funny because in the Ant Colony episode, when we talked about Ant Colony, I mentioned that it looked like the Cartoon Network style. Oh, you're like right. Oh, so that's really funny. 
in which he created the look for Adventure Time, which is pretty cool. Um, but all the characters in this are great. The story is actually pretty good. It goes pretty in depth. Um, there's some breaks in the story where it'll interview people around Toronto because the Richards Valley is actually super famous in Toronto in this world. Mm -hmm. um, animals all talk and like humans can understand them for some reason, which is also explained through these random aside interviews and history lessons that are throughout the book. Mm -hmm. um, Michael DeForge does a really good job creating this world. Um, he has a fresh young voice, which is like pretty rare in comics because a lot of people are like middle-aged white dudes that just make comics mm -hmm. and that's cool because they made a lot of like really cool stuff i mean everything here is fantastic but michael deforge is a nice fresh voice um and i just really like his work um the book is pretty strictly in a four panel grid each page is four panels oh, very cool. simple setup you know setup 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 punchline mm -hmm. but it's it's all great i mean there's like a there's a whole scene where this squirrel sings uh, Send in the Clowns by Frank Sinatra, <laughs> which is pretty great. Um, the squirrel's my favorite character. Mm -hmm. Squirrel and the spider. There's a spider in here. Becomes a hand model. Nice. It's funny. It's, it's a funny read. It's, <laughs> it, you really have to be into the sense of humor that Michael DeForge has, which is kind of like that wacky millennial Adventure Time style of humor. Right. But I like it a lot. I, I enjoyed it. Obviously, one of my favorite reads of the year. Mm -hmm. Even oh. Richard's Valley. Nice. So today, we're going to be talking about some of our most anticipated books for the year. Mm -hmm. um, that being 2020. If you're watching us in the future. Um, so, Victoria, what is your most, your first most anticipated book of the year? Well, my first most anticipated book of the year is not coming out anymore, so we'll start with that. <laughs> um, last year it was announced that Fables would be having an Absolute Edition coming out, or a few of them, I should say, and um, it got cancelled. <laughs> Which makes me very angry, because if you've been with us from the beginning, you are probably aware with my Fables rant that I believe happens in the first episode. Um, you know, Fables is just really fucking long, and... Uh, I don't want to have 15 th deluxes. 15, it's 15 deluxes. More than that. No, I think it's 15. Is it 15? I think it's 15 oversized hardcovers. It's 15 oversized hardcovers or 24 trades. Or 150 issues. Or 150 issues or like there's not annotated versions, but there's like no, I think there's other like, yeah. versions of it. There's, there's like there's a lot of ways of to collect fables. Like there's a lot of different ways to collect it. And half of the hardcovers are out of print, so I can never get them. I don't have the shelf space for 24 trades. Like, or 15 deluxes. Or 15 deluxes. Like, the absolutes would have been the perfect they format. They like five, I think. Yeah. They were doing like, 30. Uh, that's fine. Because if you think about it, I have like four Harrow County oversized hardcovers that are yeah. the size of absolutes. So it's like, like, that's fine. That would have been a perfect solicit, like a version of the story so that it's easy to read. Because a lot of people can't have the 25 trades just that yeah. accessible. And uh, it makes me mad because I really like the art. And uh, I really would like to see it in absolute size. With the little ribbon and the little slipcase. And, you know, bada bing bada boom. So that's my first rant. I'm mad that something's not coming out. My most wanted, as of right now, mm -hmm. is... It, fa um, not fanographics. Humanoids just put out a video of it. So we know it exists. So this is not getting canceled. It also comes out at the end of this month. The Meta Baron's complete hardcover slipcase collection. Ooh. So the Meta Baron is a character from, I don't know if you guys can see it, The Ink Call oh. by Yonorowski. Mobius doesn't do the art on the Meta Baron's though. Mm. Um, this is like a super praised section of the Yodoverse, people like to call it. <laughs> this is all Yodorowski written stuff that happens in the Ink Call universe. Mm -hmm. um, it's supposed to be really good. The Meta Baron's a really cool character. He comes from like a race of just warriors that they're bred to kill. And um, uh, the Meta Baron's, I'm like 99% sure, just goes over that lineage. Because there's a long lineage. And it ends with the Meta Baron from the Incall. Oh! So there's like a million Meta Barons that it'll follow. And I think it'll be cool. 
Um, check out the Humanoids YouTube channel if you want to see what the book looks like. It's similar to the Incal. You know how it has like the cool slipcase with the cat? Mm -hmm. Has two books in the slipcase because hey. the Meta Barons is long. Oh, uh, that's cool. Uh, the only thing that sucks is that it's a hundred fifty cover price and it's limited to fifteen hundred copies. Ugh. Um, actually, this was I think this was like a hundred twenty five cover price. The ink call with. But is um, that still in print? No, fifteen hundred copies. Oh, so same deal. That's yeah, cool. It actually just went out of print. It was in print for a while. Oh. I think this Meta Baron one was probably gonna stay in print for probably about like six to eight months. Mm -hmm. It'll take a little bit for it to um, go out of print because it's a little obscure. It's a European comic, mm -hmm. um, and European comics aren't super popular in America. Um, but which they yeah, should be. Which they should be because they're great. Yeah. The Meta Barons is great, and I'm read. Well, it's not. I don't know if it's great. I haven't read it, but I'm very <laughs> excited to read it, and I'm very excited to pick up this slipcase edition. So, as we all know, we're big fans of Tom King over on the old FBC. So. Who would I be if we didn't talk about Strange Adventures for a second? Of course, that is the new work by Tom Mitch and Doc Sharner doing covers and interiors, right? Yeah, they're both doing interiors. I think yeah. they're going to do like a cool like split thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's covering Adam Strange. It's a cool character. Yes, it is. He's very cool. And uh, I don't know much about Adam Strange, so I'm really looking forward to this run because before Mr. Miracle came out, I didn't really know too much about the new gods or Mr. Miracle specifically. It got me into new gods. Yeah. Made me want so, to pick up the curve. So I stuff. really love reading all of their work together because they like to reintroduce characters, aside from like the Batman and Superman stuff that Tom King's done, they like to take these characters that maybe not new audiences know. What a clunky sentence. <laughs> I'm gonna re-say that. Um... They tend to take characters that the mainstream audience is typically unfamiliar with and like give them a new um, new voice, new voice, new perspective, and it's just really interesting. And we're looking forward to probably fall in love with a new character that yeah. I didn't think I would. It's actually the moment it was solicited, it made me really want to buy the uh, Silver Age Adam Strange omnibus, which mm -hmm. I still really want to get because it's got uh, Carmine Infantino on art. Oh, and I think Gardner Fox does stuff in it too. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not familiar with. Silver Age DC, yeah. like I am Silver Age Marvel, but it's something I really want to check out. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I'm excited for that too. Yeah. We're, especially with Doc Shatter on interiors and Mitch on interiors. Yeah. I think that's going to be the a really cool um, combo. Mm -hmm. Even that cover that they have released now, it's just split down the middle, just the dichotomy of the two totally different art styles. It's yeah. just like, yes! And I think it's because, um, you know, Adam Strange is a man. He's split between like two worlds. Mm hmm so um, he lives on, what is it, Ran? I think Ran is the planet. He lives on Ran, yeah, because Thanagar is Hawkman. So Ran, he, he goes to this planet Ran, mm -hmm. R-A-N-N -N or R-A-A-N, something like that. Um, and he basically becomes like a hero there, but he's kind of just like a loser scientist on Earth. Uh huh. Um, so I think one of them is going to draw... I, I'm thinking, so what I'm thinking, theory crafting for this. I'm thinking Mitch, Mitch is going to be gonna like draw, the loser part. Yeah, he's going to draw the human stuff because he's got, you know, like the more scratchy, um, gritty art style. Right. And, and then, then Doc Doc's going to draw his, you know, superhero. His superhero. Like, heroic. Yeah. yeah, I think it'd be cool. That'd be that'd really be cool. cool. That'd be awesome. That's, 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 that's what I'm hoping for. It. Yeah, I'm hoping for that too. But I'm sure really regardless, even if it um, isn't what I expect, it's going to be great. Of course. Yeah. So, Strange yeah. Adventures. Tom King, once again. I'm very excited for um, the Absolute Fourth World stuff. Nice! So that's going to be probably a few Absolutes, right? Because it's going to be two. Yeah, because that's a big boy. So I'm actually a little disappointed with how they're releasing it. Oh. Um, Because they're releasing it with the omnibus mapping. Because the omnibus is mapped mm. not in order. Like it oh, goes, I see. It's in release order. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to do the Fourth World um, Absolutes in release order also. And split it, split oh. the omnibus down the middle. Which I'm not too fond of. I'd rather have four absolutes. I'd rather have absolute new gods, absolute Mr. Miracle, absolute right. Jimmy Olsen, and absolute forever people. Oh, that makes a, oh they're not gonna do it that way. No. Oh, that kind of sucks. I want absolute new gods so bad, so I could just read new gods. Yeah. That makes sense to split it up in fours like that. But I'm still okay it with like it. Four. Yeah. Yeah. It is so like if it, so you said it's two or three? They're gonna do two. So how are they going to group them? Are they going to do the first... In release order. Okay. So it's going to be like the first six issues of Forever People, Mr. Miracle, Jimmy Olsen, yada, yada, yada. I see. Okay. And then the other one, it's going to be the rest of it. 
So the second one's going to be super Mr. Miracle skewed. Mm -hmm. Mr. Miracle has 18 issues. Um, and New Gods has 11 issues and then like a special and then a graphic novel. So the second one's going to have like a lot of a lot of New Gods and Mr. Miracle. That's mm -hmm. going to be a good absolute. That's still I'm still not a fan of the mapping though. It's still gonna be cool to have because Tom King also just said he's writing the intro for it. Oh, there you go. He did say on Twitter he's writing the New Gods intro. So I'm kind of hoping DC pulls oh. a Fables and cancels the Absolute <laughs> and then resolicits it as Absolute New Gods. They should just stop canceling things. They cancel everything. Hopes People up. get so mad. I'm mad. I'm still mad about Fables. Yeah, I'm just mad at cancellations in general. Yeah. I mean, I, let's like, why are you going to solicit it if you're just going to cancel it? Right. Like, another one they canceled, they canceled, they canceled a, a Starman omnibus, which... Um, yes, they did! Did I you want to read that. Starman? I wanted to read Starman. I've never read Starman. Do you those, know why? Because it's out of print. Exactly, because all those hardcovers, you can't find them anywhere. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, they solicited the big omnibus. Yeah, and I remember a ton of people got excited, and even a bunch of people in some Facebook groups that were in for selling comic books, they went and, like, sold all their hardcovers for cheap because yeah. they thought it was coming out, and then they canceled it, like, three weeks later, and everyone was like, I just fucking sold those hardcovers, and now they're not making it. Yeah. So, yeah. The moral of the story, don't sell your stuff until that final until order the book happens. Until you own the book. Until don't pictures sell your of stuff. it exist. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, let's hope. I mean, in your case, the fact that you kind of want them to be remapped, and I, then hopefully I, they Yeah, I would cancel. definitely remap them. Because yeah. with the Fables one, they did say they're interested in resoliciting it in a different format. Oh, they should do... Omnis. Omnis, yeah. Even if they did 30-issue Omnis, it would be cool. 30-issue Omnis at, like, a $75 price point? That's not that bad. That'd be genius. That, that'd be genius. I would, yeah. That'd be 5 that'd be, for that'd 75 be good. Yeah. 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 Listen, <laughs> do that. We got the ideas over here at FBC. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I drink to that. My last book that I'm very excited about, still on the Tom King train here, is the Deluxo Mega Man. Now, I know that is probably your favorite Tom King work, right? It's like neck and neck with Mr. Miracle. Yeah. Um, and I've never read it, surprisingly. So... I'm really excited to get that deluxe art cover so I can read it and then also have Tom King sign it the next yes. time I meet him. Barnaby Begenza's art in that is delicious. Tom King met him so on Deviant Art. He did. We spoke about that in our Tom King episode. Yes. Like He's um oh my god, I love Omega Men so much. Mm -hmm. I love that thing you've told me about it um a few times where he, that thing he does with the panels, how it starts with ten. And yeah. then each issue he loses a panel and it no, counts down. Yeah, it's each page. Each in that page, one that's issue. what I meant. But yeah. it's also with because Tom King said um, he each one's mirrored, and since it's like each one's mirrored, so the f layouts of the first issue mirror the layouts of the twelfth issue. That's crazy. And then the reason why he did that thing in that issue with the counting down mm -hmm. was because there's a fill-in artist, so he couldn't mirror the layouts of the fill-out artist. So oh. he decided to just do like a cool countdown. That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, we are. We I, well, I do. I love Tom. And I you also Tom love too. Tom King. And uh, anything he puts out, he could write a whole twelve issue miniseries on Spider Ham and I would read it. Yeah, he could write he could write he could um write... a story on what's a character I don't like. Um, I don't know, I kinda like a, I kinda like everyone. I was gonna say Calendar Man. But... Yeah, he could write he could write a maxi series of Calendar Man taking a dump in I <laughs> <laughs> Until October thirty could... first, Halloween. I take my next poop. <laughs> a hollow dump. <laughs> Yeah, so very excited for Omega Men and everything else that Tom King has in store. Yes. Pretty much. This just turned into another Tom King episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the final book I'm excited for is um, a book by Adrian Tomini. Tomine Tomini. Oh, that name sounds familiar. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite comic book creators I've discovered in the last couple months. I've read uh, three of his things, Sleepwalk, Killing and Dying, and Summer Blonde. Draw all three short story collections. Hmm. Um, all fantastic. But he's coming out with a book released by Drawn and Quarterly this year called The Loneliness of the Long Distance Cartoonist. That's a name. And I'm really excited for it because it's supposed to be like an autobiographical memoirish type thing. Mm -hmm. And I love memoirish comic books. I mean, Blankets is one of my all-time favorites. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited for that one. Um, 
I really love everything he's done. He captures like uh, humanity, all that stuff. Tells stories about like regular people, mm -hmm. and they're just captivating. I mean, they're definitely not for everyone because I mean, you you could definitely portray his stories or like view his stories as kind of boring. Nothing overly exciting happens in them. It's kind of just basic human drama, mm -hmm. basic human emotions. But I really like all of his stuff. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's not really a cartoonist like him, and out of like that whole '90s alternative comics movement, I think he has the most human voice out of any of the people I've read. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, he's awesome. into me. Cool, it's my guy. <laughs> Thank you for watching Freshly Brewed Comics, the show where we drink coffee and talk about our favorite books. And make sure to hit subscribe and stay tuned for future episodes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Clink, clink. So, Victoria, what was uh, what was the first thing you read this week? First thing I read this what, week. Wait, 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 start. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, you ready? Mm -hmm. So, Victoria, what did you read this week? This week, I read Man Man by Mike Allred. Everything is done by Mike Allred. Um, that was weird. <laughs> you want to restart? Yep. So, what's your next? Uh, upcoming. Uh... My final pick. I'm still on the Tom King train. Um, Absolute Omega Man. Nope, deluxe Omega Man. Deluxe Omega Man. Wait, it's just deluxe. It's hardcover? a deluxe hardcover. Oh, I thought it was absolute. Oh, I wish it was that. We love you guys. Yes. For watching uh, Hershey Brew Comics. Oh, don't make it any more obvious that you ran out of coffee there. Oh, <laughs> no, that's funny. If you have any mugs that you want to see us use on the show, send us an email at freshlybrewcomics at gmail.com. And we'll give you a, uh, somewhere to send it. <laughs>